What's good, y'all? This is the day. It's back with another video. You know what I'm saying? Shoot you about the title. This video, I'm going to be doing a reaction video on... Basically, it's Lamar Odom just telling you, um... He doing an interview about, basically, his near-death experience. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I'm going to get my reactions on that. So, like I said, if you're interested, definitely keep watching. Now, it's crazy because... Even through all, like, all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why, but you honestly, you just forget... I, for me personally, I just forgot how good Lamar Odom was, but it's just like... I don't know if it was because, you know what I'm saying, because he played with Kobe and, you know, Kobe, you know, he's always going to be the best, you know what I'm saying, but it's the simple fact that, you know what I'm saying, like, I like, definitely, I always liked his game, you know what I'm saying, because it's like, bro, like, he, like I say, <laughs> he, he, he was the type, he could do it all, you know what I'm saying, because I ain't know, you know what I'm saying, going back in high school, you know what I'm saying, he was actually a, a point guard, so I was like, oh, so that's why he was so, like, just smooth with it, you know what I'm saying, so, then he was like, he was six foot nine, so, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, he gets in the bed. I mean, you can be a point guard, but they probably could have you playing other positions, you know what I'm saying? But, I know, yeah, he was with the Clippers, and I, I don't remember him too much with the Clippers, you know what I'm saying? I, I, then I remember him somewhat with the, uh, with the Miami Heat, but then when he got to the Lakers, yeah, like, instantly, but I just, like, I ain't know my favorite with him. He's like, but he used to be in that corner three with the left hand. He used to hit out. I used to be like, but, like, as an answer, that's cash, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like I said, of course, you know what I'm saying? After the Lakers, like I said, he went to Dallas and had nothing really came up that. Then he, I think he went back to the Clippers, you know what I'm saying? But then, I don't know, at that point, he was just, like, he was just going through his, you know what I'm saying, drug addictions and everything, you know what I'm saying? Then I think... I don't know if it was before or after his near death experience, he went to the Knicks, you know what I'm saying? But pretty much after that, he pretty much faded out, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? But then that's why, like I said, the near death experience happened, because, dang. I want that, I give it to him. It's like, but God must have been on your side, man, because, like I said, but you had 12 strokes throughout that whole coma, you know what I'm saying, that you was in. It's just like, dang, but the fact that, you know what I'm saying, even after that, like I said, you came through, like I said, you know what I'm saying, like your body, like you were still, like, the same, like, I mean, you ain't the same, you know, so you still, like, mentally, like, you know, so you still, you know what I'm saying, you still gonna have, have a little mental issues, but at the, at the end of the day, it's like, but the fact that, because normally when you have a stroke, yeah, like, usually, like I said, you can come out of it, but, you know what I'm saying, your body ain't gonna be really the same, but the fact that you came out of it, but, like, your body-wise, like, but you still the same, it's just like, man. Like, I definitely, hey, give your pops to you, bro, because, like, like, the God must have been with you, bro, because, oof. Cause I remember, yeah, hearing about the story, I was just like, ah, oh, I mean, but, I guess I ain't really pay too much attention to it, just like, you know what I'm saying, just, I think it got serious to what, like, say, when they were saying, like, he kept having strokes, kept having strokes, I was like, oh, dang, I was like, Lamar Odom, he about to be out. But, you know what I'm saying, hey, he's still living today, like I said, as you can see, you know what I'm saying, hey, he, He's still functioning well, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, now I don't think he do any drugs no more, you know what I'm saying? Of course, he say you smoke weed every now and then, but he say, for like anything past that, he say he don't do that no more. I'm like, hey, good, hey, definitely, hey, kudos to you, bro. Like, hey, whew, boy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, so I'm going to get my reaction to the little interview we're talking about it, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, if you're interested, definitely keep watching. That's what I'm to do. We're going to get into it. I'm going to turn now to our GMA cover story, an exclusive interview with former basketball star Lamar Odom. He's now opening up about his near-death experience, his road to recovery from addiction, his relationship with Khloe Kardashian, and why he is now telling it all in his new memoir, Darkness to Light. ABC's Gigi Chang sat down okay, with him. Okay. Good morning, Cecilia. Good morning, guys. You know, he seemed to be on top of the world. This flashy NBA career, massive endorsements, and a hit reality show. Remember Khloe and Lamar of the juggernaut Kardashian? Clan? Yeah, I remember, well, but I ain't never watch it because I don't want to watch the Kardashian. died of that drug overdose at a Las Vegas brothel. His life was a string of tragedies. Lamar sat down with us for a wide-ranging interview, revealing for the first time raw and intimate details of a life derailed. It's really a story of triumph, of overcoming obstacles. Over a lot of tragedy. And tragedy, overcoming tragedy as well. At 39 years old, Lamar Odom's life has already been filled with the highest of highs. Oh, yeah, mom passed cancer. away, yeah. You're looking to, um, to fill that void. Right. You know, with things. And, you know, some things I was trying to fill that void with were destructive. Your first time with cocaine was laced with sex. What was that like to mm. be introduced to that toxic brew? Mm. Uh, for me, that's exactly what it was. It's toxic. It was like the unleashed of a demon. I was professional at hiding it. 
Chloe didn't know for a long time. Chloe and Lamar wed in 2009 after a whirlwind one-month romance. Tell me what it was like being on camera, keeping up with the Kardashians. Mm, that's a, that's a lot. Tell that's me, a, I loved it. You did? Yeah. I mean, a red carpet is rolled out for you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. What's not to love about and that? And you playing for the late. At that time, <laughs> when we shot our show. Chloe and Lamar. Yeah, I was playing really good Lakers. basketball. With the Lakers. You were the pinnacle of your career. Right. And yet, you were hiding your drug use and your sex addiction from Chloe. Oh, yeah, sex yeah. addiction too, right? Married, you don't want your wife to know that you sniff coke and... Have strippers. <laughs> 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 have <sex> well. <laughs> hey, you were blunt. <laughs> In the book, Lamar recalls one drug-induced rage, hallucinating and paranoid. He says to Chloe, oh, "I'll expert and kill you. You don't know what I'm capable of." Mm. I'm pretty sure she had to be scared yeah. at that point in time. You no thought you gonna kill me? Like, I don't think that like. I couldn't believe how I was treating that queen like that. Mm. Have you apologized to her? I don't think I have. Oh, damn. Do you feel like you owe her an apology? Yeah. Yeah, her and her family. Mm -hmm. Apology. Big time. She at that point kicked you to the curb. Yeah, but she like took care of me. I had everything I ever need, wanted and needed. Oh wow. So it was like a kid being kicked out of his house. Yeah. It was like a twelve year old losing his mind. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say that, yeah. Lamar says he went to the Love Ranch, a Las Vegas brothel, to escape the fear of losing it all. I was just thinking about trying to go have fun. You weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking. Mm. I wasn't thinking. Being selfish. After a four-day bender, he was found unresponsive. Twelve seizures, six strokes. His mm. heart stopped twice. Wow. All of my, my doctors from Cedar Sinai said I'm a walking miracle. By all rights, you took lethal doses of whatever substance it was. You don't have any memory of taking drugs. No, I did. But you also don't have much of a memory of any of it. Well, Lamar, you took some, but... You did like, cocaine. I can't even remember. I can't even remember. It's been um, a long time. So you're not high now? No. Oh. <laughs> did I sniff cocaine before this interview? I was like, why the hell would you be high before interview? told stories in the past. How do I know you're telling the truth now? Well, all you can do is believe me. Yeah, so, okay, she been brought to a fault though. It's like, but why would he be high now like, after all that? Like, These but. days, he says he will have an occasional drink. Like, I, I smoke marijuana yeah. to this day, though. Just to help with some anxiety. You do smoke weed still? Yeah. Yeah. Helps cool me down. When was the last time you smoked weed? Um, yesterday. Yes, I did. I say, yep. Yes, But everybody's path. You know, in rehab and after rehab, it's going to be different. Right. To find sobriety. I mean, you can use a chill, but like, okay, for yeah. like cocaine wise, like, yeah, he ain't, he ain't done it. What you like. say in the book is, I am Lamar Joseph Odom and I am alive. That's how you end it. Mm -hmm. What does being alive really mean to you? Being conscious, being present. Yep. Um, being aware. We should note that the Kardashian family didn't have any comment. As for Lamar, whose own father also battled addiction, a lot of his sobriety involves making up for lost time with his son Lamar Jr. and his daughter Destiny, who I also spoke with, and it was mm -hmm. her ultimatum that finally forced him into rehab. Oh, yeah, and I hopefully remember that. break yeah. that cycle of addiction that plagues so many families. I certainly hope so. That was a fantastic interview. You're going to have a lot more. Yeah, on except this I ain't like how you were just that book, of course, assuming that he was high on today. cocaine. Well, hey, I like GMA it. fans, Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great... Hey, <laughs> there you have it on now, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, damn. Boy, I say he had six strokes and they're all together, you know what I'm saying? Because I think when he was in the coma, he had like some more strokes. So it was like, damn. Whew. Yeah, I mean, hey. Like you say, hey, he went through it, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, he just... I don't know, he just, he just had an addiction, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know what I'm saying? Most times, like, when people have addictions, you know what I'm saying? Usually it comes from, you know what I'm saying? Okay, past trauma. Like I said, he, he lost his mom, like, you know what I'm saying? At 12 years old. So it was like, yeah, like, how is that not going to affect that child, you know what I'm saying? Especially that young, you know what I'm saying? So, then it was the crazy part. I was like, damn, wait, so your first time doing cocaine was basically during sex or basically probably could have been, you know what I'm saying? Female probably just offered it to him. Like, well, she probably doing it. She was like, hey, try something. Like, nah. 
Me and that's the way I'm like, nah, mm, I ain't doing that. So, so even if she put it like, well, you get to do this or you ain't getting it, I'm like, bye. You know, I'm, that's just me, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh uh. Especially if I know I, I got more, man, I don't do that stuff, man. But, you know, to each his own, you feel me? So he said, and that's when everything pretty much just spiraled out of control. Although he was living a lifestyle, like I say, playing for the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? Playing damn good at that. And then, like I say, you met the Chloe Kardashian, you know what I'm saying? You all, We all know how the Kardashians are, you know what I'm saying? Then, secondly, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, yeah. you was in LA too, it was like, damn, bro. Ooh, so then of course you know what I'm saying once you know what I'm saying Chloe you know what I'm saying kicked him to the curb which I don't blame him because it's like yeah I mean if his drug addiction was getting out of hand it's like yeah okay you gotta pay hey, you gotta put your foot down with it you know what I'm saying but like you say basically that just kind of like made him spiral out of control because like, and she hit it right on the money she was just like it was almost like you know what I'm saying like a 12 year old get kicked out the house by his mother you know what I'm saying because he always said like Chloe did like you know what I'm saying mind remind him of his mother you know what I'm saying so like, Hey, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you lose parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know I lost, I lost both of my parents, you know what I'm saying? I know when I lost my dad, yeah, like I say, definitely, I was looking for somebody to fill that void, but every time I thought I found somebody, then they would just do some, they would just do some snake shit, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, you know what? At the end of the day, like, you know what? Like, the only way they helped me was, okay, I just know, okay, I have one father and one father only, although he's not here physically, but at the same time, we like, you know what I'm saying, I just had to think about what all that he taught me while he was here. Okay, yeah, now I can just apply that to, you know, how I live my life, you know what I'm saying. Now, even with my mother, you know what I'm saying, like, I ain't gonna say I found, you know what I'm saying, I was looking for somebody to feel like, well, with my mother, you know what I'm saying, it was just like, I don't know, just by that time, it's just like, when she passed, of course, it, it devastated me deeply, but at the same time, you know what I mean. And then they was like, okay, I wanna look at like, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Well, she's like, so I need somebody to fill that void. Like, nah. Like I said, it was just the same thing with my dad. Okay, I just remember everything that she taught me. You know what I'm saying? It was basically, she taught me more because, you know what I'm saying? She lived, she lived, you know what I'm saying, longer. So, you know. So, you know what I'm saying? Basically, I just remember everything she taught me. And then, like I say, I just apply that to how I live my life. But then, hey, that just would help me, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's pretty much different, you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, like I say, yeah, and then with the ranch thing, it's just like, I don't know, the thing with that, he was like, he don't remember taking, most like he probably ain't gonna remember, you know what I'm saying? Cause he had strokes, 12 strokes, so, you know what I'm saying? But he was just like, he's just so sure, like, he don't remember taking anything. It's like, well, the mom, you took something. Like, either, like I say, either you took something, or like I say, I think he said one of you, he said possibly, maybe somebody probably slipped something in, in his drink or whatever, and then he just ain't know it, otherwise he, Gotta be careful. That's why I say I, you gotta be alert all the time, especially you in a place like. Ah, it's just like yeah, you gotta always be on your P's and Q's, bro. Cause uh, that's why I say if somebody pull me something, okay, I gotta watch them do it, cause I don't know what they gonna put in my put in my drink, you know what I'm saying? But even with that, it's like okay, what they pulling, like ain't no telling, you know what I'm saying? Okay, they could have put something there before I got there, you know. What I'm saying? That's why me personally, that's why I'm a homebody, so okay, anything at home, okay, I know I know I put it there, so you know what I'm saying? So ain't nothing in it, you know. Overall, like I say, he's come through it, you know what I'm saying? He even admitted, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still smoke weed to the day, you know what I'm saying? Which, hey, that's what helps you cool, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't like how the interview was, like, she was trying to say, oh, he was high on cocaine. It's like, but why would he, like, he kind of laughed it off, you know what I'm saying? He ain't getting mad at it. Me, I would have been with him. It's like, why the hell would I be on cocaine doing this interview after what I just been through? Like, that's, you know what I'm saying? I ain't like, don't get me wrong, like, a lot of people do still do it, like, even after they come through all that, but, you know what I'm saying, he, you know what I'm saying, he just at the point, he's like, bro, like, I'm not doing that no more, he's like, you say, I can still smoke weed, you know what I'm saying, and occasionally I take a drink, but, he said, it don't go past it, it's like, yeah, I mean, like, you say, everybody we have is different, like, you know what I'm saying, it ain't gonna just happen overnight, you know what I'm saying, Richard, you just gonna, when you're, you're just gonna, you know, win yourself off of it, but then, then, hey, once you good, hey, you good, you know what I'm saying, but, hey, so, bro, like I say, yeah, he been living a good life, you know what I'm saying, so, even like after COVID passed, you know what I'm saying? He ain't. That's one thing, like, from a COVID pass, I was just like, okay, because I know him and COVID was tight, so I wonder, like, was it going to put him back in that state, that mindset, you know what I'm saying? But nah, he still kept it pushing, you know what I'm saying? But so, I said, I'm definitely proud of him for that, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, keep, hey, keep, on, living your look, keep on living your life, bro. So, like I said, that was my whole thoughts and opinions on that, you know what I'm saying? So, like I said, hey. Like, comment, subscribe, also share my videos, whatever you want to do, whatever you can do, I'll die with it regardless, you feel me? So until my next video, y'all already know what it is. I'll see y'all in a minute.